UDK's crowd system allows you to populate your levels with swarms of agents that have a limited amount of behavior that they can exert to seem to fill your levels up with a larger population of characters. Now, crowds should generally be thought of more as a visual effect than something that you really expect your player to get down and play with. And that's because they have this kind of limited behavioral ability. They're not like the AI-driven bots that you may find in an Unreal Tournament deathmatch-style game. They're not going to chase you down and shoot at you with guns and whatnot. They're really, their key behavior is going to be to run through your level, going from one point to another, and giving the illusion that there's a lot more characters there than might otherwise be. Now, here's a quick demonstration. I'm just going to jump down into this level. And here come our crowds or our single crowd. I've actually got a few of them spawning out into the level. Now, the, each one of these is considered to be an agent, and they've been assigned some behavior, and they run through the level, and this is really all they do, and you can see they can pile up. We can get quite a few of them. Now, by default, these guys are pretty fragile, so if you feel the urge to shoot one of them, they immediately fall down. So you can't have a little bit of fun here, but really this is the whole purpose of a crowd. Just to give your levels the illusion that you have a lot of characters moving around from one place to another. So if you had a level, for instance, where you know, like a robot invasion was starting to take place, it might make sense to be able to show this kind of thing. Now, also, you'll notice they will dodge the player by default. So I'm just kind of standing here in the hallway, and they will do their best to get out from uh, running me over. And some of them still do it anyway. Now, this is just generic flocking behavior. There's really nothing particularly special about the AI. And we're going to talk about how to set up a simple example. I will give you a word of warning, though. These videos are not intended to make you an absolute master of everything about the crowd system. Instead, I'm going to show you how to set up a basic crowd scenario, and then you can get in and start playing with the different behaviors and see all the different results that come out of some experimentation. So that's all I want to just do here is give you kind of a visual display of what these crowds look like. And now let's get started and look at how we can set this up. Our first step in creating a crowd is to create an archetype. An archetype is really just a set of rules that our crowd will follow while it moves through our level. And creating one is very easy. Let's open up the content browser and I'll expand actor classes. Now underneath actor classes, locate up at the top, you'll see crowd agent base underneath which is game crowd agent and then game crowd agent skeletal and underneath that you'll see UT game crowd agent right click on this and choose create archetype now this is gonna ask for some package information so I'm gonna put this in a package called crowd demo package and in a group called archetypes and we'll give it the name crowd archetype now, if we jump back over to the content browser, we see our archetype. And as I mentioned, this is really just a collection of rules, essentially properties. And if we double click, we can see all of these properties. Now, I'm not going to be going through all these. We're just going to leave all of them at defaults right now. But it would be worth your while to spend some time playing with these because you can really get some interesting behaviors. You can change things uh, ranging from just how long the dead bodies will stay if you start shooting your... Uh, your various crowd agents. You can change the health of your bots. You can control how they move. You can even control the skeletal mesh that's being used. So let's go ahead and close this up. And let's take a look at our next step. So we have our archetype in place. The next thing I want to add is a way to control how our crowd agents are going to move through our level. So to do this, we need a very particular actor. I'm going to jump back into the actor classes browser. And if we take a look down here, we see Game Crowd Interaction Point. Expand that, and you'll see Game Crowd Destination. Let's go ahead and select that actor. Close out the Actor Classes browser, and I'm going to right-click right here on the floor of my level and choose Add Game Crowd Destination here. You can think of these like waypoints. These are how your, your little crowd agent is going to be running around the level. And we need to make a network of these to move our crowd agents from one spot to the other. So let me start off here in the top view. We have our first agent, or I'm sorry, our first destination here in place. Let me hold down the Alt key, and I'm going to drag a copy over here into our next room. And we'll just kind of line it up with the hallway. Now let's hold down Alt again, and I'll drag out another copy. And we'll hold down Alt again and drag out another copy. And this one I'll put all the way against the back wall. 
Now, just creating these is not enough. We have to link them all together so that we start off over here, then we run to the second one, then run to the third, and run to the fourth, and so on. We do that by setting up a specific property inside these actors. So I'll start off by double-clicking our first destination, and you'll see Game Crowd Destination. If we expand this, there are several properties we can play with. Among them is Next Destinations. Now, by default, this is blank. It has nothing that you can add into it. So we need to click the Add New Item button, and that adds Index 0. Now, we need to place our next actor in here. So what you got to do is lock your Properties window. So click the little Lock Selected Actors button. And now you can select the next waypoint without losing your current selection. So we'll go ahead and just select him. i got to zoom in to do it. Now, with that selected, I'm going to click the green arrow, which says Use Selected Object in Content Browser, but it's not. It's actually grabbing the selected destination actor here in your scene. And there we go. So now we're running from the first point to the second point, which you can verify. If you go all the way back and click on your first point, you'll now see a yellow line connecting the two. Now, we need to do this all the way around to complete our network. So I'm going to unlock my Properties window, click on my second waypoint, and then relock my Properties window. Come up here to the third point. We'll add a new item into the next destinations. Select that third point, And then click our green Use button. Now, unlock your properties window and just double check, make a test. So we click, and there we go. There's our yellow line going from the second point to the third. Now, let's select the third point. Once again, we're going to lock, come over to the fourth point, over in next destinations, add a point, or I'm sorry, add an item, and then click use. Now, let's unlock and do a quick test to make sure that everybody is connected. So here we are from the first waypoint. We have a nice line running to the second. Then we have a nice line running to the third. And finally, if we select this guy around the static mesh, we have a nice line running to the fourth and final one. All right, now this last actor, I'm going to double click it and take a look at its properties one more time. There's a particular setting I'm going to activate here called Kill When Reached. This means that once the crowd agents make it to this point, they're going to cease to exist. And I'm going to go ahead and check must reach exactly. That way they don't die early. Essentially, it means they're going to run all the way back to the back wall before they die. So we can close out the properties. Now at this point, we have our archetype. We have a network of kind of like path nodes in a way, some destination points that our crowd agents can run around. What I'm going to do is have you go ahead and save here. And then when we come back, we'll take a look at how we can use Kismet to start spawning our crowd agents into the map. Those navigation points that we added into our map are really only half the battle. The other half is that we need to create a navigation mesh to help our crowd agent understand where any walls and obstructions might be along their way. Now, creating a navigation mesh is very easy. It only requires the addition of pylons. A pylon is a special kind of actor that we can create at any time. I'm just going to right-click here on the floor, choose Add Actor, and Add Pylon. You don't have to dig it out of the Actor Classes browser or anything like that. And here it is. Now, to show off what this is going to do, all I'm going to do is just click Build Paths up here inside the main toolbar. Give that a moment, and we get a navigation mesh. What this has done is it has calculated everywhere that one of our crowd agents could potentially go within the radius specified in the actor itself. And you can see this is almost enough. Actually, this really probably would be enough to guide our robots all the way around the level. So we take a look at it from above, you can see exactly how that works. Now, if, say we wanted to fill in this corner up here, we didn't want that to, uh, to be blank, we could just add another pylon. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hold down the Alt key, and here in the top view, I'm going to drag a pylon over here to the other side. Now, if I put it right here in the center of the room, we have a problem in that you should never have two pylons that both are within each other's radii. So if we take a look right now in the top view, and I'll go ahead and make this nice and big. Both of these pylons are in each other's radii, and that's a problem. Now, we're fortunate in that we could just take this guy and slide him just barely out of the radius. It's okay if the radii overlap. That's perfectly all right. You just don't want them to be in each other's radii. Okay, so with that, now let's uh, rebuild one more time. And I'll jump over to the perspective view. And now we've got a navigation mesh which completely fills up all of the surfaces of our level. 
and the color coding helps you kind of see what's going on. The green are areas that our bots can walk, and the red surfaces are obstructions or obstacles that they won't be able to get through. So that's the other half of our navigation. So go ahead and save your work at this point, and then we'll take a look at how we can start spawning our bots into the map using Kismet. All right, our nav mesh is set up. We've got our navigation points. We're pretty much set to go. The next thing is just to tell Kismet to start spawning in our crowd agents. So I'm going to jump into Kismet. And we need some sort of an event to cause this to happen. And for simplicity's sake, I'm just going to use a level loaded. So let's right click, choose new event, and grab level loaded. Now, the sequence object we need to spawn in our crowd agents can be found under new action, crowd, and you want to grab the UT crowd spawner. Now this has several different properties you need to be aware of. The first and foremost, most important, is agent archetypes. This is why we created that archetype from the UT crowd agent actor early on. We've got to plug it into here. Now currently it has no items, so we need to click the add a new item button and we get index zero. And if we expand that, you can see the agent archetype field. Now I'm gonna go find our archetype. It's buried over here in the content browser and it's currently selected. So let's jump into Kismet once again, which I only minimized apparently. And we'll just click the Use Current Selection and Content Browser button, and there we go. Now, this Agent Archetypes property that I've added this new entry into allows you to add as many archetypes as you want and control the frequency that each archetype will be spawned. So if you want more of a particular type of agent to be spawned, you can just increase its frequency or decrease the frequency of others. If you have several different archetypes that all need to be using the same frequency, you don't need to create a separate agent archetype entry. You can actually just add that archetype to the group members field underneath a single archetype, and they'll all work off the same frequency. All right, let's take a look at some of the other properties here. If we scroll down, we've got cast shadows. Sure, let's go ahead and switch that on. Uh, let's see, enable crowd li light environment. That's exactly... Uh, what we need right now, because if we bring these in, they're not going to be lit. They'll just be like silhouettes with some emissive parts, and that's that's no good. So now moving down from here, only spawn hidden is very useful. That's why it's on by default. What this means is if we're looking at the spawn point, no agents will actually spawn, which is cool because it helps to keep from breaking the illusion that these guys are actually coming from somewhere. You don't want the player to ever really see these actors just pop right into existence. But we're going to switch it off just for testing purposes so we really can watch them spawn and come into life. We can turn it back on a little later and you can see how that works. Uh, do you want to respawn any dead agents? Uh, I'm going to go ahead and check force obstacle checking just to make sure that they do indeed look for any obstacles that may be in their path. Now, I'm going to take my loaded invisible output and we'll connect that to the start for our spawn. The only other thing we need is to designate at least one spawn point. So what I'm going to do is back here in our level, I will grab our first navigation point, jump into Kismet, right click on spawn points and choose new object var using game crowd destination 11. And that should be it. Let's go ahead and try this out. I'm just going to right click here on the floor and choose play from here. And there we go. Now you can see these guys popping into existence, which looks a little weird. In fact, some of them I think are popping out through the wall. So we may want to move that forward, but we have a great big crowd which is now running its way through our level. We can stand in the middle of them and they will try to avoid me, which is pretty cool. We can shoot them and by default they're really weak. So you could just sit here and pick them off as they come through. And no more are going to spawn until a few of them make it to the end and die. So we can chase them down and lay waste to them. But really that's all there is to it. Creating a basic crowd to run through your level is very, very easy. And that is going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.